Hello YouTube, it's Mr. Baumgarten here with the next in my series of videos on using the Python image library to uh, do some creative fun stuff with images. Uh, so I've got my Visual Studio code open here. And this is the next in a series of videos on uh, particularly targeted for my students working through the InstaLife unit. Uh, but if you are just using the image library and stumble across this over YouTube, then just look back at the previous videos to uh, see what you need. Um, so I'm just going to start a brand new Python file in my VS code. So I create a new file and then I'm going to go straight to file and save. And I've made up a demo for here, which I'll just save it in here. And let's just call this drawing.py. So remember you need the .py on the end so that uh, your Visual Studio Code recognizes it's a Python file and we know it does because down the bottom it now says Python 3.8. Uh, and so the first thing I'm going to do is run my import co commands. So for the Python image library and to be able to draw on it, there's a few imports I need. So from pill, I need to import image. I'm going to import image draw. And you can see uh, VS Code is helpfully recognizing what I'm typing. I want the uh, image font as well. And I'm also going to import image tools. And if you've just stumbled across this one, this over uh, from YouTube, this is the, um, uh, what is it? Image tools made easy library is what you want to do your pip install for. And obviously pill comes from at the pillow library. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is use my image tools library to take a photo with the camera. So camera equals image tools. Oops. Okay, yeah. Camera equals image tools dot camera. And then uh, photo equals camera take photo. So this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw things on your screen, on your image. Uh, and then next video, I'll put together a quick little example uh, mini project to create a little bit of a meme and use my own success, uh, my own take on the success kid meme. So let's um, test that this works. So photo.show. And if I run this code, you should get a really corny photo of me. There we go. Uh, and let's check the dimensions of this uh, photo. So uh, I want my width and my height from the photo.size attribute. And let's just print width and height out onto my console window. So if I run that again, right, uh, I have 1280 by 720 print out in my terminal. So I know that any photo I'm going to take is going to be 1280 by 720, 1280 wide, 720 high. So let's. The first thing I want to do is be able to let's draw a line across this uh, photo, and I should probably have. Uh, let's just open up a blank web page. Okay, so if if I have, let's just draw. Apologies for using. Uh, <laughs> such terrible drawing methods, but anyway. Okay, so this is if this is my photo, and I know that wide it is 1280, and high it is 720. Oops. <laughs> uh, so the way the coordinates work inside the image tools library is your top left corner is your zero, zero, and your x axis increases as you go across and your y-axis increases as you go down. So this bottom right hand corner will be 1280, 720. So if I want to draw a line, let's say I want to draw a red line that runs vertically, yep, vertically down the center. Oops, that's not red. Vertically down the center. All right, then I don't want to come in my starting point is going to come in. Uh, so half of this will be uh, 640. 
right, that's going to be my x value. Uh, and my x value at the end, well, yeah, so if I'm keeping it just vertical, then my x value at the end will also be 640. My y value at the top will be 0, and my y value down the bottom will be 720. So let's have a test and see if I can draw that on a photo. So I'm going to come into my code and I need to create a drawing object. So I'm just going to say draw is equal to image draw uh, dot draw. And I link this to the, the photo that I want it to be uh, attached to. So I want it to embed it into my photo here. Okay, because that's uh, photo is what I called is the uh, variable name that I've given it. And I'm going to move this show command, cut and paste that down to the bottom so that it shows it after I've done the drawing. Uh, and then it's just draw dot line. Okay, uh, and then a second set of, of uh, parentheses inside that. And I give it my starting x, y coordinate and then my closing x, y coordinate. So my starting x coordinate was uh, 640 and my starting y coordinate was zero, and my finishing x coordinate was 640, and my finishing y coordinate was 1280. After that, I then put in a comma, and uh, I can give it an optional color. All right, so I can say fill is equal to, uh, and let's make this, uh, it's gonna make it red, so R, G, B. These are out of um, 255, your red, your green, your blue. If you want to have help with a color picker, then just just Google uh, color picker, all right? And Google itself will come up with a helpful little chooser tool for you. So, if, for instance, I want to use this this shade here, my RGB values are one six eight fifty one fifteen. So let's use that one six eight fifty one fifteen, all right? And I should get that color. And then I can also give this an optional width parameter. So let's make it 10 pixels wide so that it's nice and thick when I draw it so we can, it's nice and obvious. So now if I run this, there we go, I've got a purple line running down through my head. Okay, and so I can easily, if I wanted to now draw a, vert, a um, let's draw a, a line running across like that from the top corner. All right, that'll be zero, zero, and down the bottom here will be uh, 1280 and 720. So that will, let's just copy and paste this. All right, and so from 00 through to uh, 1280 and 720. Okay, and I just realized I made an error here. Um, my finishing coordinate for that Y value for that line should have only been 720. The reason why it didn't crash, um, the Python image library has been very kind to you and it just kept drawing beyond the edges of my photo. So there we go. Let's make this a, a slightly different color. So let's get my color picker back up. Let's go for um, some kind of orange. What have we got here? All right, so this 252, 157, 33. 252, 137. What was the last number? 33. No, oh, hang on, it was 157. 157.33 and let's fix that up and let's make this nice and thick give it a pixel of 50 and now if I run that okay so there's my line running really through my head okay and so that I can keep on going like that to draw as many lines as I want I'll just comment those out All right. The other thing I can do with the draw library is I can use it to draw uh, full on rectangles. Uh, and so the way this works is if I draw dot rectangle, uh, I, again, double parentheses for my sets of coordinates. Um, so I should just mention here, yeah, so that that double parentheses, all right, one set of parentheses closed after the coordinates there and then the other one closed at the end of that um, command that function call. Okay, so here, uh, this time I'm giving it the top left corner of the start of the rectangle and then the top left corner of the end of the rectangle. So if I wanted a rectangle that, say, went from the, this halfway point, came halfway down and filled up the rest of, so that quarter of my picture, right, that would be, so what's halfway through my x 
that was 640 and the top of the Y was zero all the way through to the end of my X values which was 1280 uh, and to half of the 720 in terms of the height so uh, was that 350 360 okay and if I make that let's give that a fill color of uh, let's make that blue so I might I can just copy and paste this all right, uh, these go inside their own sets of parentheses. Okay, and you can also give this a width. Um, now that width is going to be a different color yet again, as you will see. Uh, no, the width didn't even appear. There we go, unless it was just too thin to notice. Let's make it a 50. Okay, so that width hasn't appeared. Here you go. Um, so that the width doesn't work on the rectangles. Learn something new every day. All right, so drawing lines, drawing rectangles. Uh, you can also draw an ellipse, easy enough. An ellipse is just a stretched circle. So if I draw uh, ellipse, uh, and the way the ellipse works is that you give it the boundary box we're done with that one. Uh, you, and we're done with that one. How many of these do I have open? Oops, uh, that was the last one. Uh, anyway, you give it the boundary box for where you want the ellipse to appear. So if I want an ellipse to fill up this entire quadrant, right, then I use the coordinates for the rectangle whereby this edge of the ellipse would touch the rectangle, this edge of the ellipse would touch the rectangle, this edge of the ellipse would touch the rectangle, and this edge of the ellipse would touch the rectangle. All right, so I just want to put in the coordinates for a rectangle that would fill up that whole bottom quarter. Uh, so that would be 640, 360, All right, and that would go through to 1280, 720 uh, and this let's make this a um, okay so I could, that's what what I needed to do to get the width to work I just remembered so what I'll do is instead of giving this a fill we'll just give this an outline and we'll use the width command All right, and so outline and you give that your color so let's just pick another color let's go for something green this time bright future green all right, so if I put that in there, oops, it needs a set of brackets. And I've got rid of my end one, so let's put that in. All right, this time it will pay attention to the width command. So if I make that a width of 50, we'll see what we get. There you go, so I've got a hollow um, circle width of 50 being the lines and you can see that it's touching the edge of the rectangle that I gave it the boundaries for. So I can fix up this blue uh, if I wanted that width of 50 to mean something I just replace the fill with an outline and that will make it a hollow rectangle. You can have a outline as well as a fill uh, and so if I give that a fill of red, let's just make it red, uh, 255, zero, zero. Okay, so the fill of red, outline of blue, that's how that works. So the last thing I'm going to quickly show you in this video is how to write some text on your image. Uh, and the thing you're going to want for this, you're probably going to want to download your own font, uh, A, to make it more interesting, um, mostly. So let's just uh, go to fonts.google.com and pick something that interests you. All right, so what categories do we have here? Let's, uh, is there some weird wacky font? Okay, this thing looks uh, fun. Uh, it'll do for now. So I'm gonna hit the plus symbol on that. One family selected. And now I'm going to download this font file All right, and put it into my demo folder that I've created. And if I open that, 
Uh, so here's my Python file that I'm working on, and here's the this file that I've just downloaded. If you right-click it uh, and extract it into this location, so extract here. Uh, you've got a true type font file, and that's uh, what I should have mentioned when you're on uh, Google Fonts. You want the file that you want needs to be a true type font. So just double check that. How do you double check that? How do you double check that? Maybe it just always gives you a true type font. There was a way of double checking it. Uh, if you don't get a true type font, then you might have to try a, diff a second font. But anyway, you need this file here. And in our Python code, all right, so I'm gonna create a variable for my font. So I'm just gonna call it font for now. Uh, image font, so capital F and, uh, for font, capital I for image. Uh, and then I use the word true type. That's all lowercase. And then in here, I open up, up a set of brackets and I need to give it the file name for the font file. So if I open up my folder explorer, I'm just gonna say open the folder and by default, it picks the folder that you're in. So I select the folder. Uh, yes, let's save. It's gonna quickly close and reopen everything. All right, so this is what I'm working on and we can see here, okay, here's my font file, my TTF, uh, lacquer hyphen regular. So let's just type that in here. You need to get the uh, casing correct. Well, actually, that depends a little bit on your operating system, but let's not get into details on that. TTF, uh, and I'm going to give it a font size. Let's call this, make this 48 point font. And then uh, I just draw it on my screen. So, draw. So, I'm using the same draw object that I created here for image draw. Uh, except now I'm going to draw a font onto it. So, to draw some text and I need to give it a set of coordinates. So this is the X and Y coordinates for where the top left of the writing will appear. So what I'll do is, I'll just put in zero, zero to highlight this for you. So top left corner of, of the image, uh, and then a caption. That's a very boring computer science caption. Uh, and then a color. So let's just go for yellow which is red and green without any blue. And then uh, a font command. So font whoops, is equal to uh, this thing. So in this case, it's gonna be font equals font. So if I had called it something different here, then I would have used that name here. So let's just call, just to illustrate that, let's call that font one. That's my first font. Um, because you might have a few of these because not only are you specifying the font type, but you also have to specify the size. So if you've got a few instances where you want different sizes, you might end up with a few different font variables. But if I run this, okay, there's my hello world appearing in yellow at 48 point font. And you can see the top left corner of the text has appeared at zero, zero. So if I make uh, down here. If I make this the coordinates that I use for the font, then it will appear in this location right here. Uh, so instead of 0, 0, let's make that 640 uh, and 360. Uh, and let's make this a bit larger. Let's go for 96. Let's double it. Alright, there's my hello world there. Uh, and so that's, yeah, that's really how the drawing functionalities of your images work. You just need to play around with the coordinates to figure out what you want, and you can get some uh, quite creative uh, and colorful things up and running. So the next video, I'll do a little example one. Okay, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing out.